the artists uh, take different stances towards making the objects, right? And in the lecture that I gave the other day, we talked about the Mardi Gras Indians who make these elaborate, elaborate beaded costumes, and their project is to make them annually every year. And then also at the end of the year, they burn them. It's part of the tradition. And so another group that I talked about was the Mummers. And the Mummers uh, don't make their own costumes. Um, instead, a lot of the fancier ones are made. Actually, they go to New York and have um, Broadway producers, um, Broadway costume designers design and fabricate the costumes. So it's a really different, so there's a whole spectrum. I guess I, in the puppet tradition that I, I'm coming from more, it's about making and the empowerment through making. So making costumes is sort of a rite of passage. We're not makers anymore. And every act of making is an act of resistance. Can you talk about that theme? Every act of making is an act of resistance. That's actually a quote by Anne Hamilton, the artist. I do think that um, more and more we as a culture make, make things less, rely on buying everything. And then also because of that, we don't trust our ability to make, to make things or we're really nervous to put things out there that aren't you know, very, very finished. I, lots of times in puppet making also, I call it the target effect. Like, because people think you can just go to Target and buy something. That should be ready to go. But when you fabricate something, it, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of skill. Um, that's more like in the puppet tradition, especially when you're dealing with people who want to buy things and they want to pay you a dollar for it. But anyways, that's another story. I, mean, I do think, though, that um, just like today, you know, like what is it to make a, an object, a hands-on object? You know, it's, it's, it's exciting. Parade for you. Um, this one's going to be great. I think any parade is successful. Just the act of having a parade yeah. is a success. Because awesome. the amazing thing about parades is is that it's it's sort of a reclaiming of the street, right? So you you get to take it over for art. It's pretty amazing. Costume or mask gives you a license to behave in ways you would never do otherwise. Yeah. yeah. Talk about. About it, um, I I've seen it. People in mass groups they behave really strangely. Uh, some group mentality takes over and they act goofier or sillier, especially with kids, shy kids. In a group, in a parade, they act outrageous, which is really fun to see. Or they perform in really different ways. I think it is when you conceal your identity in terms of wearing a mask, then um, other kinds of behaviors. Are How do you think about the audience joining into the parade, and if it's, it's an assumption that you go with? Not, not usually. Um, a friend of mine, Molly Ross, she came up with this theory about parades, which is that there's kind of three categories, the maker, the joiner, and the watcher. And like what happened today is a lot of making. But on the parade day, a lot of people would want to just jump in the parade and be in the parade. And the third category is the watcher. And I think in a way, you kind of need all three.